In this video, I'm going to show how I make my kicks in Ableton. Uh, you can do this with just about any synthesizer, but I'm going to use uh, Ableton's operator to do my kicks. That's normally how I do my kicks when I build my own, which is frequently. Uh, one of the things I like about Ableton is it has FM capability. So this little button right here will open up the selector. And right now it's all in series, and I usually will use just two parallel chains like this uh, so that D modulates C, D modulates A, and then C and A are routed in parallel through uh, the output. And then uh, we need a note. Usually use C3 for various reasons. It doesn't really matter because I'm going to select the, a fixed frequency here. So this first operator A, I'm going to set this at like say 51. And I like to pick a long MIDI note just so I can hear the full envelope in case I have any weird stuff going on with the envelope if I end up using this operator later. I'm going to render this, but sometimes I'll use the actual synthesizer in the work as it goes. And so then if I make adjustments, I'll make sure this sounds how I want it to sound. The first thing I do here is just decrease this sustain all the way to nothing and then uh, get the decay actually probably around. Yeah, like 267 will work. I like to try and keep the release down just in case something happens later. Uh, it doesn't cause me too many problems. Otherwise, sometimes you get these tails in unexpected places if you're not careful. And then uh, I like to do another one with it. So I'll add this extra oscillator here. Uh, I usually like two different frequencies so that they can cut through the mix a little bit better. If it's all one frequency, if something's interfering with that frequency, that is an interfering with like your whole kick. So by mixing this up, if parts of the sound dip out in what your brain's processing, you're still going to be catching some of the other bits. So let's, uh, I don't know, say like 43. And I'll turn this up and you'll hear this. That long right now because this isn't all the way down to negative infinity for my decay or for my sustain. So you can hear how it just sounds louder. And it's objectively a little bit louder too. The amplitude is a little bit higher because the way these two, um, you get some amplitude modulation so that you get some bigger peaks at points within the full sort of new cycle that we've created. And then, um, so the next thing I do, for, well, actually, sorry, I forgot one more thing. Then I like to play with these oscillators. Uh, I always forget and just come back to it whenever I come back to it. But right now they're just start as a sine wave. And I like to add a little bit of mix. I want them sine-ish because, you know, most of the kicks that we're used to hearing tend to be sine anyway. They get muddy really quick when you introduce other kinds of waveforms. But I still want it to be slightly muddy because that's going to create some of the extra harmonics and stuff that are coming out. So in operator, I'll just directly add those in. The second harmonic, right, uh, what do we call it, root, root, first, second, anyway, add some good sound to it. So I want a little bit about that, like, it makes it sound almost a little bit more real to me. It's got that kind of weird, like, wobble sound that an actual, like, kick drum skin gets when you hit it. So add a little bit of that, but maybe not as much as if it was, like, a real... But add some of these in here, just make it slightly less sign like, sinusoidal. And I'm getting a little bit of extra noise, so this might need some EQing at the end, but we'll see what it looks like later. So once I get that, I got like two messy sine waves, put them together, fixed frequency. I chose 51 and 43 this time. I'm usually somewhere between, say, like 35 and 50-something, 50 55-ish uh, for my frequencies. And it'll kind of just depend on what kind of feel I'm looking for or if I already know sort of where it's like, what kind of project it's going into, where some space might be within the frequency bands that I'm looking for. Um, and so I can adjust those as needed. But otherwise, some low frequency really all I need. And then I want to give it some more pop. I'm getting some of the general kick and I don't usually, I mean, you can, you can make these decays way longer, but I don't like to have a long bass tail on these um, 
for a number of different reasons, not least of which is just mixing with those can be a pain in the ass unless you've built everything around it. Um, and then uh, I go to pitch envelope. So I'll have this pitch envelope and what this will do is I'll turn this attack um, value all the way as high as it'll go. So it sets this peak at plus 48 steps. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna start with this note being 48 steps higher than what I've chosen down here, this combination of 43 hertz and 51 hertz. And then it'll decay down to the uh, actual frequencies we chose here. Um, it doesn't necessarily start at 12. Sometimes I'll start at like, is that, well, actually no, it doesn't matter at all because I'm doing no attack. So you can just ignore this for now then. Sometimes if, if you're adding a little bit of attack and how it goes, then maybe. Um, so it'll sound like this now. You can hear it starting high pitch and coming down, but it's taking 400 milliseconds to do it. So we hear a lot of that. Our brain processes 400 milliseconds pretty well. Um, but if I decrease that, I just get this little snap at the beginning now. And you can make a little bit bigger snap. This is maybe more house-like or techno type of shit. Or I like to have pretty short snap on that. Um, just so it gives it a little bit of pop to cut through the mix. So you're hearing, you're picking up the kicks, but not necessarily like that's all you're listening to and it's not too much. So speaking of the not being too much piece is if this frequency is way up higher, it sounds louder to us because it's getting these kicks up into a range that our brains are, are picking up on more easily. I actually want to lower this a little bit so it doesn't sound so out of place or cut through too much. So it kind of depends on what you're going for. If I'm Doing something more chill, I might go a bit lower. Which is that little bit of pop. It's kind of sitting uh, um, more just in the mix, not popping out as much. And if I want more energy, then I'll go, oops, a little bit higher. So maybe not 48, but maybe. Yeah, like right here. This sounds good. There's with the pitch envelope. There's without the pitch envelope. That gives me a nice little transient pop at the beginning, a little bit of a bass wave that comes out after that. And then, um, and it's not too, too long, so I don't have to worry about it totally screwing up my mix too much uh, and making it difficult for me to do my work. And then the other thing I'll do is I'll always process this a little bit too, just right out the gate. Uh, one of the things I do a bit is my EQing, especially I want some high pass on it because sometimes you get in these samples, depending on either how I set up the MIDI or, or or if I've done anything weird in here that I just didn't notice this would happen, you get really low frequencies that hang out for a while and, and they can just cause problems. And it's super, super annoying when they cause a problem in your mix and you're trying to track them down, but you can't hear those low frequencies. So anything like essentially below 20 Hertz, you'll get these and sometimes they'll even have really high amplitudes and they create this amplitude modulation through all the rest of your project making it sound different than you wanted it to sound, and then finding it's a pain in the ass. So I'm super anal about high passing all of my kicks and any of my like really low frequency samples and, and, and synthesizers. So mostly this will just help keep it clean. Sometimes I'll duck out some of the mid frequencies. just to make it sound a little bit nicer. For whatever reason, that separation of the bass section and the, and the highs makes it them sound a little bit nicer to me. It's also just less mud in your mix. Like you're cutting some of this shit out that you weren't gonna be listening to anyway. The other stuff can fill that in and really shine as opposed to having to compete with this signal here in this little band that I've cut out now. That's another thing that I like about this. And then uh, I like to use this uh, ADHD leveling tool, the free plugin by ADHD Audio Tools, and it's got some gain and some uh, sort of a tube amp feel to the drive. You can add some saturation, and then it's got a built-in compressor also. So I really like it for the compressor. Sometimes I'll even turn this all the way down to zero if, if I'm dealing with kicks. But sometimes it's nice to give it a little bit of drive. And then I'll turn this attack on the compressor down between somewhere usually between like 35 and 55 milliseconds. I'm going to go in the 40s. 
no, this is really big already. So I was just going to go 37 ish. Um, and then I'll leave the release long if I'm just doing the one sample, because I'm going to render this later, which is part of the reason why I like this. I'm not using the compressor, but it's not competing with other inputs. So it's really just doing a one shot compression job on this. And then for ADHD leveling tool, this here is a um, essentially adjust the threshold. The higher you go, the lower the threshold goes on like a normal compressor. So it's going to activate sooner. And then you can adjust your compression here for how much compression above your threshold is being done by your compressor. Um, and then, so I might adjust this a little bit, but so I like to have that pop come through and then really clamp down on the bass quick. Uh, and the main reason why, just so it's not sitting so much in the mix. Almost too much pop actually. So then you just get kind of the sound you want, but I like that. It's got the 37, 38 milliseconds of time where that transient really pops through, but then it starts compressing all the rest of it. So it's not overwhelming things too much. You get a nice poppy, nice snappy kick. Um, oops, let's do this. And that's pretty much it. Let me make sure sometimes I like to just double check the EQ afterwards too. Sometimes this will add in some additional like subharmonics. Uh, any plugin can do it. I get it less with leveling tool than some, some plugins. I just like to make sure it's still, you know, relatively clean. And I take out more of the middle just because it sounds nice. And then I got what I like. I'm going to freeze that and flatten it. And then just for funsies, we'll do a quick little drum uh, pattern with this. So mostly what I've been doing lately is just popping this into a uh, drum rack. This is clean. Um, and, and then, you know, building my patterns that way. Then I have this, whatever loads. I don't need that anymore. Turn that off for a second and let's do a quick the quick drum pattern what it sounds like and then you know usually i'll do more processing once it gets to this point too might lower this a little bit add some saturation maybe some additional compression kind of depending on how it all handles everything uh but then now i got this cool kick here this oops let's do that and then i was gonna do something like this there you go we got a kick we got a pattern all made from scratch in uh less than 15 minutes probably even quicker if i wasn't talking at you